Hi there, and welcome back to my little musical refuge. For those of you who never came across one of my videos, my name is Martin Wiese, and we're here at the Aurora Musik Labor, my studio. Today, I want to talk about my latest demo work called Underdog, which has been exclusively written for the new Dark Mass expansion for Retrolog 2. Dark Mass has been produced by the marvelous guys from the solos. They do a lot of trailer work and this is exactly what this expansion is aiming at. The big screen. And I'm talking about very big, very vast cinema scope kind of screens. What seldomly happens with synth expansions, and I know tons and tons of them, is that nearly all of the sounds in there kicked me while I was skipping through the presets. And a little selection of those really cool sounds in there I want to show to you today. So let's have some fun. What you can easily see is that I've spiced things up this time because for a trailer-like piece of music I needed some orchestral colors from Iconica. By the way, a really high quality full orchestra library from Steinberg that covers the whole range of orchestral instruments that you need for cinematic music. The drums and some additional sounds I did with the help of Backbone, another stunning new instrument that Steinberg released about a year ago. I've done demos for both Iconica and Backbone, so if you're interested, go ahead and watch them too. I've organized all of the sounds in three folders named after the libraries or instruments used, so we have all the dark mass sounds up above here, the orchestra stuff from Iconica here, and all the way down all the Backbone sounds up here. What I want to do today is to have a look at all of the sounds I've taken from Dark Mass so that you can get an idea of how the presets sound and what you can do with them. But first of all, let's have a listen to the track. What is the most important thing in this track? Bass, right? So let's check out the bass sounds first. The fundamental sound of the track is the 8th wave bass and the corresponding 8th wave bass vamp. 
The vamp creates the melodic bass pattern, while the simple wave bass supports the fundamental notes of the different chords. They first appear after the build-up part, so let's listen to them in solo mode. You can see that both instances use the same sound, while the vamp is created with the arpeggiator. I now want to give you a short comparison between the original sound and my modified version. You can easily hear the difference. Let's do the changes. Bit red to tube. See what happens. Almost there. Cut off to 10. Distortion level to 26%. There we are. The second important arpeggiator based bass sound is bass arp buildup. That, as the name indicates, appears in the buildup part after the intro. changes I've made here are more subtle than in the case of the 8th wave sounds. I've just added the synth noise over here and dialed in some reverb. The problem with bass and reverb is simple. A bass easily becomes muddy and less powerful the more reverb you add. That's the one side. But on the other side, within a track like this, I want to create emotions around a sound. So I need reverb. For that reason, I added only a little 9% of the reverb to create a smooth room around the bass. The high cut is at around 2 kHz, the main time is moderate, but the room size is all the way up. So let's have a listen to the sound with and without reverb. Let's take the lower. Quite a difference, right? So you can easily hear what kind of emotion the reverb gives to the sound. The delay feedback of the original sound already created a certain image, but I wanted to have a real room around the sound, not just a fake room via reflections done by the delay. So I dialed the feedback of the delay down, because I liked the rhythmical effect it has on the sound, but not with this large amount of feedback. Let's just compare that from the original sound. You hear this, this uh, long tail. And again, my version. The opening drone is another important sound of the track, which I didn't change at all. Demon Sync is an ideal attention grabber drone bass that makes use of the mod wheel connected to the cutoff to rise the energy level at any point of time. Let's listen to the whole build up part and listen to the impact of the opening drone sound.
I love that sound because it's exactly what you need for epic trailer-like contexts. The next effect bass sound is the downer up here. I derived it from the preset called Simplicon. Let's quickly rebuild my version of the preset, which is simply done by reducing the amount of distortion to 39% and lowering the cutoff because I wanted to have this smooth and deep kind of downer that pulls and drags you into a scene. The downer effect I achieved by setting the pitch bend downrange to minus 12 and using the pitch bend to bend the note downwards. Let's just rebuild the sound. See, cutoff at 74, cutoff in the original 166. Let's rebuild it. Distortion all the way down to 39%. And what you can also see is that I changed the attack time here in the envelope. Right. Now I'm going to demonstrate you the downer effect. Or just. Let's now listen to the effect within the track. The last bass sounds I wanted to discuss are the three basses added to 8th wave bass in the main part. Bass ARP A main, which works together with 8th wave bass, while drone bass enriches the bottom end, and brass bass support strengthens the bass line to cut through the mix. Let's listen to them separately, then adding them up one another to see how they work together. Interesting about layering these two sounds is that I sorted them apart 15 ticks from each other because 8th wave bass needs a bit more time for the attack, so the two work better together and form a better groove this way. Now, once again, all together within the mix. The brass bass support just supports the next notes over here and works together with the drone bass. Just as I said, enrich the sound. The bass ARP outro pulse, by the way, is just the same sound used for bass ARP buildup, just with a reduced pattern and a lowered cutoff. Now I'm heading over to the pad sounds of the track. 
There aren't very many of them, but that doesn't mean that they are irrelevant. Quite the opposite. Let's have a look at the very beginning of the track. What you hear is one single sound, one single preset called Endless World. And this name only tells what happens in the intro, right? I love this sound and so it forms the sound world of the intro together with a layer sound called Broken Interface. The reason for there being two instances of the two sounds is to separate the bass from the upper voices. The first statement of the bass sound is again realized via pitch band. Interesting is a very simple effect I used between the two upper layers. As you can see, the panners move in the opposite way to create a special effect of moving and shifting while the notes of the melody progress quite slowly. Next pair of pads are the pads A and B in the main part. Let's listen to them separately. I would bet that no one of you realized these two guys while just listening to the track. Let's start with pad A. Pad B. As you can easily hear, the two different sounds cover different ranges of the frequency spectrum, and this is why they both together form a wide and big pad unity. What's quite astonishing is that pad B forms the upper layer instead of pad A sounding much higher, right? But exactly this helps binding them together to work as one pad. Listen to them combined. again within the whole mix. In between I'm going to mute the pads for you can hear how they really work. Now that's fascinating, right? It's this phenomenon like you only realize the sound when it's gone. And that's what these pads do so perfectly. They provide a wide space, even a reverb to the, to the melody, while laying out the harmony of the main part in a very defensive way. Because I want harmony here to just carry the melody without knocking it off. I've grouped the arpeggiated harmony instance under the pads because it establishes the harmonic field with the use of rhythm. But it actually does the same thing as the pads A and B do, but in a more exaggerated way. 
Let's do the same thing and listen to the track and I mute the mid arps from time to time and you can hear what happens. <laughs> Again, you can hear what an important role this one plays in connecting the harmonic range to the rhythmic range. At this point, let me spot the percussive arpeggiator sounds down here for a moment. Let's listen to them separately, together, and then combined with the mid arp sound. As you can see here, I've created two separate layers of the same sound. And this happens due to the dimension aspect I wanted to add to this sound. There's really a lot going on within the main part and so I had to clear things up a bit to help every aspect shine through in the very busy mix. As you can see, I've separated the two sounds 12 ticks from each other to create the well-known Haas effect. To create dimension by delaying two identical signals and panning them left and right in the stereo field. I didn't push the effect too hard in this one. I only set them 64 and 61 left and right on the panner just to make room for melody and bass in the center range. The ticky arp is set of four ticks too and together the sounds form a cool 16th addition to the bass groove. As you can easily hear now, is that these sounds only blend in when the melody holds the longer notes. Let's listen to that within the whole mix. It's a very important thing to focus on what is most important for the music and in this case melody is everything. It emerges out of this whole wall of sound and forms the centerpiece of this part without dominating everything. The melody consists of three layers. What I had in mind for this melody was a new form of brass sound besides the well-known horn-based epic cliché sounds that we all know and love. I wanted it to sound like dark mass version of real brass. Of course, the brass from Iconica forms the backbone of the sound in the lower octave, while the two lead sounds from dark mass add a strange and large dimension to it. Interesting is the microphone setup I chose for the Iconica brass. I took my favorite tree mic and added the surround instead of the close mics. I wanted to have a clear sound that still doesn't feel too much like center stage. With this combination I have a big brass sound that doesn't mud away in the mix, so I didn't add any more reverb to the brass. 
The reverb comes from the two lead layers. Again, all three sounds in combination. Here you can see the spreading of the sounds over the range of octaves. Brass is the fundamental sound while the two pads cover the upper frequency range. Let's head over to the effect sounds. Time is running, so I'm just going to spot every sound and then focus on the middle part of the track where most of the effects magic happens. Let's now try a funny thing with the middle part starting at bar 18 and mute all of the effect sounds. You hear that the music is still there, but as I said, all the magic and the power coming from the effect sounds is gone. By the way, all of these wonderful sounds are inside the Dark Mass expansion. 
150 presets full of inspiration or ready to use sounds a really awesome pack and i'm not just saying this because i'm doing a video for steinrek right now but believe me i know tons and tons of synth expansions and i seldomly spot such an extraordinary selection that is clearly named ready to use and inspiring in the same way while slowly reaching the end of this walkthrough video I want to talk a bit about the orchestral additions and the drum sounds coming from Iconica and Backbone. The big drums consist of two sonic elements, toms and snares. First we have the original toms from Iconica above here, teamed up by the toms and snares done with Backbone. For the snare sound, I created a group sample using all snares of Iconica and then importing it to Backbone, resulting in this very cool synth kind of snare sound. The Backbone toms use the Iconica toms too and mangle them in different ways. To create this group effect, I doubled the tom synth and swapped the LR positions for a richer sound and added a dry tom layer on top to get a little more grip and attack. And there we are ending up with this big array of drums. Let's listen to them. Let's add Gran Casa and the toms from Iconica. Let's just spot what I've said about the tom doubling. You can see here and here. Just the opposite. Let's listen to them all together within the mix. The orchestral colors still to be mentioned are strings and winds. Let's have a look at them. In the middle part, they perform a little dialogue while the woodwinds spice up the high strings. Again, the whole passage within the mix. This whole little idea is built around the two minor triads going downwards, E minor shifting to G minor back and forth. In the build-up part of the intro, I used a little orchestration thing to create tension within the dialogue between the low strings and the woodwind. Low strings open the conversation and the woodwind answers. But the answer sounds a bit odd or weird, saying something like, something is not that cool, you might better be careful here. You can see that we still have this E minor to G minor idea, but it's more dissonance in there. Look at the last phrase. We suddenly have an E flat minor triad followed by a simple E minor triad ending with a major second E plus F sharp. Listen to this phrase alone and imagine a deep underlying E coming from the bass.
Okay, that's it. We're through the piece. I hope you've enjoyed me talking about my own stuff and the really beautiful sounds of the new Dark Mass expansion for Retrolog 2. Stay tuned and have fun making your very own music. Bye bye, see you next time.